Welcome to CPE 214 Signals and Systems. This is the backup lecture 8, continuous time Fourier transform of the system part. My name is Sanditam Pramon, I am the instructor of this course. In this lecture, we will discuss about the system aspect of the Fourier transform and how can one estimate the frequency representation of the system using the Fourier transform technique. Let's begin. We need to first look at the system in the time domain. Let's consider the convolution integral like this. That is, the output signal yt is the convolution between the input signal xt and the in-power response ht. If we want to find the frequency representation of this system, we can take the Fourier transform of the whole equation. And then you have the left hand side as the yj omega, which is the Fourier transform of yt, and the right hand side as the Fourier transform of the whole terms, which when we look at this whole term, it would be by applying the analysis equation, integrate from minus infinite to infinite of the convolution sum e to the minus j omega t dt. And as a property of integration, we can switch the place of the inside integral variable and the outside integral variable by changing the place of d tau and dt. Attaching with it, we need to also move that term alongside with dt. So the inside would be the integral, the integration of minus from minus infinite to infinite of h t minus tau e to the minus j omega t dt. And the outside would be the integration of x tau and this term and d tau. If we look at the inside term, this is similar to having a shifted version of the impulse response fetching into the Fourier transformation. So if we, we can use the time shift property of the Fourier transform, to pull the e to the minus j omega tau, which is a time shifting part of the ht out, and leaving the inside of the bracket to be only the integration, to, to be only the Fourier transform of the ht. This Fourier transform of the ht can be noted as j omega. We call it in this class as a frequency response. So, and because hj omega is unrelated to the variable tau, we can pull it out of the integration and leaving only this, which is actually the free transformation of the signal x, which is the xj omega. This indicates that the convolution in the time domain is actually the multiplication in the frequency domain. With that property, if we have systems configured in a series configuration, in a cascade configuration, then the total, frequen the total frequency response of these two systems cascading one another would equal the multiplication of the first frequency response with the second frequency response. This also suggests that you can switch places between H2 and H1, bringing H2 to come first and then H1 later, because in any way, the output Yt would have to pass to these two filters anyway. Let's start by considering an impulse response Ht equals delta T minus T0, an impulse at the time T0. From the, if we look at the transform pair table and looking at the shift, time shifting properties, we would have the hj omega equals e to the minus j omega t0, <coughs> where the value t0 here is the value of the time shifting in the time domain. And this will make the output of the spectrum to be the multiplication of hj omega and hj omega and this is e to the minus j omega t0 x j omega. Whenever you have an e to the minus e to the j omega 
and a constant multiplying a spectrum, it means that you have a time shifting in the time domain. So this term is actually x t minus t zero, which is the output of the systems. So this repeat the same process we did earlier. That if you convolute, if you convolute a signal to an impulse that is shifted to the time t zero, the result would be the output. The output would be the input shifted with the time t zero as well for an LTI system. So by doing it in the frequency domain, you can also see that the output yield the same things as in convolution process. Let's then consider this differential, simple differential equation that you have yt equals dx by dt. And when we look at the differentiation properties, the yj omega would be j omega xj omega. And since xj omega is the yj omega over xj omega, so if you move xj omega down here, you would have hj omega equals j omega. Next, let's look at the concept of filtering. Filtering is a concept that when you pass a signal through a system, it selectively modifies the amount of frequency in your signals, such that some signal may pass, some band of frequency may pass through, and some may not. Let's consider this simple LTI system with the following frequency response. This system allowing a signal by multiplying the, the input signal frequency component by 1 when the omega of the input signal is less than omega c, the absolute value of omega. And otherwise, the frequency content will be set to 0. This is an ideal low-pass filter. It is an ideal because you have the cutoff frequency to be something like a vertical line. The stop bands here are all zero and the pass band has the value of one. If we inverse transforming this frequency response to time domain, we would have the impulse response which is usable, can be used to convolute the signal in the time domain to compute the output immediately. You don't have to transform it into the frequency domain. This is very useful if you want to implement a real-time system which need to process the output very quickly. However, the impulse response of an ideal low-pass filter is ht equals psi omega ct over pi t, which is, this is also called a psi c function. That is, you have a, a signal look like psi, but scaled by the time. And because ht is not zero when t is less than zero, it makes this system non-causal. So because it is non-causal, it is not applicable to the real-time processing. This design of filters will be later considered in the class in the advanced signal processing class like digital signal processing, which in that class you need to consider the characteristic of these filters and which, how can you apply it into the uh, real-world applications. Now, with the concept of filters, let's consider the following simple signals, xt, which composes of two sinusoidal signals at the frequency pi t, omega of 100 pi t, and the omega of 200 pi t, and ht of psi 150 pi t over pi t. From last slide. The frequency response of this ht, hj omega, would be a square pulse, which the value of 1 when omega is less than, the absolute omega is less than 150 pi, and 0 elsewhere. For the input spectrum, it consists of two impulses per one sinusoidal. So for the first cosine, the first sinusoidal, you have 2 pi delta omega minus 100 pi at um, an impulse at 100 pi. 
and another impulse with magnitude of delta at minus 100 pi. And for the sinusoidal, you also have two terms, one at 200 pi and another at minus 200 pi. Multiplying the multiplying x j, x j omega with x j omega, we would obtain y j omega. And if you look at this figure, it shown the multiplication process. These two peaks, because they are out of the cutoff frequency, they have to be multiplied with zero value of the SJ omega. So the filter filter these two frequency out, but allow only the frequency that are lower than 150 pi to pass through the filter. That means, and also modify the value with um, the scale of one, which means the output spectrum yj omega would contain the two peaks with the same height. So it would contain the same sinusoidal terms, cosine 100 pi t. This is called the frequency selective filter. As a duality of the convolution in the time domain equaling to multiplication in the frequency domain, the multiplication in the time domain, if you convert that into the frequency domain, the result would be the convolution in the frequency domain. We call these properties the modulation properties. It is used in the communication theory, like the amplitude modulation, the AM theories, which we will cover that in the lectures after the midterm. Let's look at this simple example. Suppose you have a signal ST which has the spectrum as shown below. A spectrum has a limited energy between minus omega 1 to omega 1. Then if you multiply it by the pulse train by the signal cosine omega 0 t, which in the frequency domain has two impulses at omega 0 and minus omega 0. And minus omega zero. Oh, this I made a mistake. <clears throat> then the multiplication of ST and PT would result in the convolution in the frequency domain, which equals one over two pi. Sj omega convolute with Pj omega, and the convolution between a signal and impulse equaling to the shifting of that signal. So the result Rj omega would be the shifted version of Sj omega with to the center frequency at omega zero for one thing and om minus omega zero for another thing. The last topic of today's lecture is when you have a more complex differential equation. To obtain a frequency response of that, let's look at this um, notation, mathematical notation of differential equation. This is an n order differential equation for yt and m order for xt. You have it as a summation of a coefficient multiplying by the derivative up to the n order. And this is the multiplication of the coefficient of for x and the derivative up to the m order. Taking the Fourier transform of this whole equation, equaling to taking this, and you have the latter ter the former terms here, a k is just a constant. So you can pass through that and having only the inside, the Fourier transform of the inside, and the Fourier transform of the differentiation is having j omega. If you have the differentiation to the order of 2, then you, have, you would have j omega square to the order of 3, j omega cube, and so on. That makes this as j omega to the k, y j omega. And this one, j omega to the k as well, x j omega. Pulling y out, pulling x out, and then arranging it into the terms of y j omega over x j omega, which is the frequency response h j omega. You would have 
moving x down here, moving this part down there, you would have a j omega equals to b summation from k to, from zero to m of b k, the coefficient of x, and j omega to the k. And for the denominator, it's the summation of the y terms a k, the coefficient of y, and j omega to the k, the order of y. This example will show you how to do it, how to get the frequency response out of the differential equation. If you have a system, an LTI system, with this differential equation, the square, the second derivative of yt plus 4 dy by dt plus 3y equals dx by dt plus 2x. Then from the previous page, or actually if you transform the whole equation and arranging the terms like in the previous like in the previous page, you will have s j omega equals one j omega plus two, and the denominator would be j omega one j omega square plus four j omega plus three, and factoring these terms, if you need to further calculate. The impulse response you need to do the partial fraction so factoring this term you would have one term j omega plus one and the other term j omega plus three this partial fraction can be done in different ways the way that i use is the way that i learned it back then but you may have learned that different approaches to do the partial fraction which is not wrong you can use whatever method that you prefer for this one we will, we will represent this rational function in terms of a constant a over j omega plus 1 for the first term plus b over j omega plus 3 for the second term. Then multiplying this denominator up, you would have j omega plus 2, this numerator, numerator equals j omega plus 3a plus j omega plus 1b. Then arranging the term with the same orders together, we would have a plus b j omega as one term and 3a plus 3b as another term. This term has the order of j omega. This one has the order of j omega to the zero. Then by comparing coefficients between the two parts, you would have a plus b equals one and 3a plus b equals two. Then think of them as two unknown with two equation. So if we subtract the first equation out of the second equation, we would have two a equal one, which led to which lead to a equal one over two, and b is one minus a, which is also one over two. So h j omega would be one over two j omega plus one and one over two j omega plus three, mapping these two with the table then you will have the impulse response by inversing the Fourier transform. Which, for that one, you would have 1 over 2 e to the minus t u t plus 1 over 2 e to the minus 3 t u t as the result. This is the end of the Fourier transform lecture in the system part. You can also apply the same technique, the same thinking, to the discrete time Fourier transform. Although the technique might be different, in the sense that the discrete time Fourier transform would have the periodic frequency and, uh, in the, and the synthesis equation would be different. But all the notion, all the other concepts would be similar between the two because they are both Fourier transform techniques. You should be able to apply the concepts learned in this and the last lectures to the um, discrete time Fourier transform as well. For this lecture, this is it. This is the end of the lecture. Uh, I hope you have a good luck for your exams. For this time, goodbye.